So as the title of this video says, I've now submitted my short film, uh, Future in Question, into 18 festivals, and I wanted to give a recap on uh, my experience. I'll be the first to admit that I'm still figuring out the film festival game, so I don't claim to be an expert whatsoever on the subject. I've been to a handful of festivals for other films I've been involved with in the past, mostly as a cinematographer, but this was the first time I really made a big push to get a film that I directed into film festivals. Submitting to 18 festivals for one short probably doesn't seem like a lot to some filmmakers who've been navigating the festival circuit for a while. I've spoken to many other filmmakers who have submitted their films to twice, three, or even four times times the amount and has spent thousands of dollars on submission fees, sometimes spending more than the actual budget on the film, which is really crazy to me. Obviously, if you're thinking about entering into film festivals, you need to think about what makes sense for you and also what your budget is because submission fees do add up really quickly. My approach on this short was to submit to festivals gradually over the span of little more than a year as deadlines approached, selecting ones I was interested in here and there. In retrospect, I'd probably do this a little bit differently next time and have a more organized list of the festivals festivals I was aiming for right off the bat. Like many aspects of filmmaking, I felt overwhelmed at first jumping into it, but after stumbling through the submission process, you gain a better understanding of how some of these things work. This video is simply to share my festival experience for this particular comedy short I directed, so this is not meant to be a comprehensive guide on how to get into festivals. This is purely just to recap what I've learned up to this point by experience and speaking with other filmmakers who have more experience than I do in navigating the festival racket. And when I say racket, I don't mean to imply that all festivals are a scam, but when you dive into it, there's a lot of so-called festivals or film awards that seem legit on the surface, but once you dig in a little bit, they feel like nothing more than a money grab, and I try to stay away from those. To start, if you're interested in watching my short, I'll leave a link above. Perhaps this will provide context as to why I did or did not get into any specific film festival that I submitted to. And maybe this might help you gauge where your film stands. Film, like any art form, is highly subjective, so I try not to get too bummed out when I receive a rejection from any given festival. And I understand that a film that connects to one person might not connect to another. Also, from what I've heard, there's a variety of factors that programmers consider when accepting a film, ranging from quality, length, genre, and many more. I still don't know what effect submitting a comedy short film has with regards to improving or impairing your chances of getting into any given festival. I've heard from one or two people that generally comedy is farewell in the selection process, but I don't have any hard evidence to base this off of. Personally, I enjoy a good comedy short film out of almost any other genre, but that's just me. And when I watch a block of short films, as you often do at film festivals, the comedies are usually the ones that stick with me when I walk away. Whenever I'm about to throw another 30 to $80 into the black hole, which is film festival submission fees, I always wonder what the competition is that I'm up against. Against, and the number of films that I'm competing with. For some of the mid to upper tier festivals, it's likely that there's thousands with many high quality films in the mix. So these are the 18 film festivals I submitted to. Of these 18, I got into five and got rejected from 13, including Short of the Week, which isn't really technically a film festival, but I still included it on the list anyways. Cost breakdown. This is how much I currently spent on submission fees to those 18 film festivals. And this doesn't count actual costs of logistically attending these festivals, airfare, hotels, other things of that nature that aren't comp. Also, another thing to note, for many festivals, you'll need to get a DCP made. And this generally costs around $100, and this is something you'll have to pay for as well. I live in LA, so it's easy to get one of these made here uh, with services like DCP for All, which gave me a pretty quick turnaround on my short film, and it was only around like $100. Also, not every film festival requires a, a DCP to be made, so in general, it's good to see if you get in first and then what the requirements are. This DCP lives on a hard drive, but it's what you give to the film festival so they can screen it in theaters. And you only have to pay for this once unless you lose the hard drive and then have to get it made again. Initially, when I finished my film, I sat on it for a while and just did research on the various festivals out there. There's literally thousands of festivals to choose from and Film Freeway is the best tool that I've found to do all of this. You can search festivals for any given area, check out reviews, websites, and social media, and any other info about the festival. You can also submit through the Film Freeway website. Like I said before, this was my first time jumping into the festival mix with a film that I directed and I was a bit overwhelmed at first. With thousands of festivals to choose from, there's going to be 
Some you've heard of simply because of the prestige surrounding them. I'm talking Telluride, Sundance, South by Southwest, and Tribeca to name a few. If you're a filmmaker or into films, I'm sure you've heard of these names mentioned or have at least seen the respective laurels on your favorite A24 movie poster. But then there's smaller ones like Shit in the Dirt and Oakland Short Film Festival, which both actually look pretty cool according to the reviews and may be worth your time to submit, even though you've probably never heard of them. On a side note, anything that just says awards, I try to stay away from. I did accidentally submit to one of these and got a best comedy award and no screening that I'm aware of. I didn't get much out of my best comedy award except for the laurel that says best comedy which is kind of worthless in my opinion and I would have rather spent the $35 on a festival that actually gave me a screening. That's just my opinion on film award festivals but you can be the judge of this yourself. Being a bit of a novice when it comes to festival submissions I genuinely thought that my film had a chance in some upper mid-level festivals like SIF, Austin Film Festival or Palm Springs Short Fest which don't have the name recognition that South by Southwest or Sundance have, but are still very highly regarded festivals. Let me tell you, I was in for a reality check. The majority of festivals I applied to, including some ones that I thought were in the lower tier category, I did not get into. In short, I found that many of the mid tier to lower tier festivals are still extremely competitive to get into. In my fantasy world, I imagined a scenario where I'd get into a South by Southwest or at least one highly regarded festival, but this was probably delusional thinking on my part. After getting rejected from a number of mid-tier festivals like Palm Springs Short Fest and Mammoth Lakes Film Festival, I came to the conclusion that I would be throwing money in the trash if I even attempted submitting to a festival like South by Southwest. So I didn't even end up trying. I did submit to Cannes, which I got rejected from, but only because it was free and I knew it was a long shot, to say the least. I've met some filmmakers who take a different approach and have the mentality that you never know until you try and do submit to a lot of these very prestigious festivals, even if they know it's a crazy long shot. But I thought it was best to cut my losses and perhaps spend the submission money on festivals that didn't necessarily have the cachet of Sundance but still looked fun to go to. To put it into perspective, according to a quick Google search, approximately 65 short films are selected each year out of around 12,000 submissions for Sundance. That's an acceptance rate of less than 1%. That's just Sundance, but I can imagine that most of these prestigious top tier festivals have similar odds. Now, if I genuinely in my heart thought that my film was in that 1% and I had a shot at making it, I would have gone for it and spent the extra couple hundred bucks, but I didn't think my film would make the cut, especially after the wake up call of getting rejected from several festivals I thought I genuinely had a shot at. And although I didn't get into any of the big name ones, I still had a very enjoyable run. The truth is there's a lot of really amazing films out there and to rise above the rest of the pack and make it into that one percent that gets accepted into some of these more prestigious festivals you have to create something extraordinary and truly unique enough where it differentiates itself literally from thousands of other films many of them extremely high quality also i can imagine that connections never hurt in getting to some of these top tier festivals but i won't speak on that because i don't know firsthand how much that actually plays a role in the selection process some very jaded filmmakers i've met will tell you it's all about connections and others will say connections to some programmers don't play as much of a role as one thinks. It's all speculations but I will say there was an instance where I met one filmmaker at a festival who in my opinion had a really great short film that they directed. Probably one of the better ones I've seen in a long time in terms of craft and story and they told me that they had a close friend who was a high level decision maker in one of these top tier festivals, which I won't name. And even with that connection, they told me that they didn't get in. So I guess connections aren't always everything, although some jaded filmmakers will tell you otherwise. In my opinion, in this business, you still have to have the goods. Although in just about any endeavor in life, connections never hurt. Pros and cons. So I'm going to list some of the pros and cons I've picked up from attending festivals. This list is only generally speaking, and I would take it with a grain of salt because each festival experience is different depending on the type of festivals you're going to and also what type of film you have playing. It all really depends. So here are some of the pros of attending film festivals. Exposure. Film festivals can provide exposure to a diverse audience including industry professionals, fellow filmmakers, and potential viewers. You have an opportunity to showcase your work in a live setting and see how that compares to other films. Networking. Festivals in certain circumstances offer opportunities to network with other filmmakers, producers, potential investors, distributors, and industry experts. Building 
connections at festivals can lead to future collaborations and partnerships. The philosophy I take in this business is you never know who you're going to run into that could open doors for you or provide you with a great collaborating experience down the road. So putting yourself in a position to allow these opportunities to happen is key. Film festivals are a space where many people from all walks of life come together to enjoy films. And just by that factor, you're more likely to bump into say a producer, for example, who's looking for new filmmakers to collaborate with or a future writing partner who's on your wavelength and who you could potentially team up with. In the collaborative medium, such as the film industry, where your next big opportunity hinges heavily on meeting the right person at the right time, my thinking is that you're only improving your chances by surrounding yourself with like-minded people, many of whom are on the same path. Industry recognition. Being selected for a film festival could potentially enhance your credibility and reputation within the film industry. It serves as a validation of your skills and creativity. Obviously, the more prestigious the festival you make it into, the greater the recognition. Personally, I think if I met a director who told me they had a film playing in Tribeca, for example, I would find that impressive and immediately think, well, they're doing something right. Audience feedback. This is probably the most important one that I've gained from festivals. Film festivals provide a platform for your work to be seen and evaluated by an audience. For me personally, I think watching my film in a dark theater with a bunch of strangers has helped me tremendously as a filmmaker. It's interesting to see what parts of my film that people react to and don't react to. For example, with my latest comedy film, there were times when I was surprised that people laughed at a particular moment, and other moments in the story where I thought they would get a big laugh, but they didn't. The point is, you can only do so much crafting in the writing, filming, and editing process before you have to release it into the world and let your film be judged for what it is. Although it can be brutally painful at the moment, I think there's no greater experience for your craft than to observe in real time how people respond to your film. And my guess is that you'll come out with a better understanding as to what works and what doesn't work. Moving forward, this experience has definitely given me ideas as to how to approach things differently on future projects. And I believe this is ultimately gonna make me a better filmmaker. That is if you're open to the feedback, whether it's positive or negative. Perhaps you could have shortened the scene where some people seem to lose interest or added sound effects at a key moment. These are things you usually don't know until you put your work out there and see how people react to them. Distribution opportunities. Although this has never happened to me, I'm sure some festivals can attract distributors and buyers looking for new content. My guess is that this only really applies to films in big name festivals but you never know. Awards and accolades. Many festivals offer awards and honors for outstanding films. Winning or even being nominated for an award can bring attention to your work and potentially increase its market value. Promotional opportunities. Festivals often include promotional activities such as Q&A sessions, interviews, and panel discussions. These opportunities can help you promote your film and potentially build a following. Learning experience. Participating in film festivals can be a valuable learning experience in not only how your film is received, but if you take the time to mingle and get to know other filmmakers, you can also gain valuable insight into the industry. Generally, I find other filmmakers I meet to be pretty open about their experiences, and in an industry that's constantly evolving, it's helpful to learn how others are navigating this crazy industry for better or worse. It'll help you stay updated on current trends and practices practices. And just speaking with other filmmakers, I've learned a lot, not only about filmmaking, but some of the business side of things too. Opportunities. Success at one festival can lead to invitations to other festivals and events. This chain reaction can broaden the reach of your film and increase its overall impact. Although it hasn't happened to me personally, I've met other filmmakers who say won an award at one festival and then received invites to screen their film at other festivals free of submission fee. Community building. Film festivals foster a sense of community among filmmakers. Engaging with this community can help provide support, inspiration, and collaborative opportunities for future projects. Marketability. Being selected for festivals can increase the marketability of your short film. It becomes a badge of honor that you can use to promote your work to a wider audience. Again, in my understanding, this applies more to some of the bigger name festivals, but it doesn't hurt to get yourself out there in some of the mid-tier festivals as well. In summary, entering your short film into festivals can be a rewarding experience that goes beyond just showcasing your work. It can be a stepping stone to building your career, but there are no guarantees. And overall, I think it is what you make it to be, and nobody's experience is always going to be the same. Here are some of the cons. Costs. Submission
Submission fees can accumulate, especially if you submit your film to multiple festivals. This can be a financial burden for an already strapped independent filmmaker with limited resources. It's expensive enough just making a film, but then add on all these submission fees for festivals that you most likely will not make back. To me, festivals feel almost like a casino slot machine where you put money in and even if you win, you're still losing money. Uncertain acceptance. There's no guarantees that your film will be accepted into any festival. The submission process is competitive and many high quality films, including yours, may not make the cut. Rejection. Receiving rejections can be disheartening to say the least and can really shake your confidence as a filmmaker. It's important to manage expectations and view rejections as part of the process. You put so much hard work and money into this thing that's like a baby to you and then seeing it getting rejection after rejection can be really tough. And maybe you're thinking, well, my film's so great, it's not gonna get rejected. But chances are you will get more rejections than acceptances. If you're the exception, then all the more power to you. You're obviously doing something right, so continue on that path. Limited control. Once you submit your film, you have limited control over how it's presented or marketed at the festival. The selection committee and festival organizers decide how your film will be positioned. For example, at one festival, I had my short screen before a feature instead of a shorts block, which was kind of weird because everybody in the audience was there to see the feature and I could tell they really didn't care that much about my short film and it was kind of actually annoying to have to sit through that so I would have preferred that in that case it was screened in like a regular shorts block but there's nothing you can do about that. Exclusivity requirements. Some festivals may have exclusivity requirements meaning they expect your film not to be screened elsewhere before or during their event. This could limit your options and premiere status but Again, I think this mostly applies to some of the top tier festivals. Limited exposure for some festivals. Smaller or lesser known festivals may not provide the same level of exposure or networking opportunities as larger, more prestigious festivals. This is just the way it goes. Some festivals are more conducive to networking than others. Time consumption. Preparing submission material, managing logistics, and attending festivals can be time consuming. This might take away time that could be used for working on new projects. There's a lot of details you need to take care of. And after you've gotten over the monumental task of actually making the film, then you have to do all the other busy work of actually applying to festivals. That's unless you have people who you can delegate these tasks to, but in my case, it was just me. No immediate financial return. Participation in festivals doesn't guarantee immediate financial returns. While it can open doors for future opportunities, filmmakers may not see a direct financial benefit. Personally, I have not received any direct financial return from being a part of a film festival, but everybody's experience is different. And I'm sure if you got into a high profile festival like Sundance and won an award, things could be different. But in my case, I've never received any money back from anything I've had in a film festival. Distribution challenges. While festivals can lead to distribution opportunities, it's not a guaranteed outcome at all. Many films that make it even to the, some of the top tier film festivals struggle to secure distribution deals, even after successful festival runs. In my opinion, you're more likely to secure distribution for a feature because I've never really heard of many people receiving distribution for shorts. Maybe you can get distribution for a short, but it seems very elusive to me. And personally, I've never really met anybody who's screened a short film at a festival and then received distribution afterwards. I'm sure there are, there are some people out there who have done this, but I, I've never met them. Market saturation. The sheer number of submissions to popular festivals can result in market saturation, making it more challenging for your film to stand out and get noticed. It's crucial for filmmakers to weigh these potential cons against the benefits and carefully plan their festival strategy based on their goals, resources, and the unique qualities of their film. Here are a couple of strategies I've developed or have learned from other filmmakers. Research festivals. Identify film festivals that are a good fit for your short film based on genre, theme, and other relevant criteria. Consider both local and international festivals to maximize exposure. Follow submission guidelines. This one seems pretty self-explanatory, but I've definitely almost applied to festivals without reading the fine print and realized almost before it was too late that my film was ineligible so I probably would have just wasted my money. For some of these festivals, there's a lot of fine print, so you have to really make sure that you just um, read over everything and make sure you're clear on everything, or else you could risk paying to submit to this festival and then realize after the fact that 
you weren't eligible and then just waste money. This also leads into paying attention to deadlines. Generally, the earlier you submit to a festival, the cheaper it's gonna be. So if you wait too long or you're not organized um, as to when the next deadline is, you could potentially be paying double the price. So getting that early bird submission fee is gonna save you a lot more money in the long run, especially when you're submitting to a lot of festivals. Creating a strong submission package. This includes uh, developing a compelling synopsis that really captures the essence of your film. A good logline or description can go a long ways and preparing high quality stills, a good poster and other promotional material helps your film in the submission process tremendously. If everything, including your film, has a nice polished look to it and it's easily marketable and it's attractive to viewers, film festivals are gonna wanna promote that more and they're gonna wanna have you there because in the end, they're just trying to fill seats. So if you have um, a film that just really stands out and like draws people in, I think that's gonna be something that's way more attractive to programmers because they're gonna to wanna to have you in that festival. Crafting an engaging cover letter. Now this is one I'm not really sure about. I've heard mixed feedback on this one. Like I've heard that uh, having a good cover, a well-crafted cover letter does help and that the programmers do read it when they're reviewing your film. And I've also heard the other way saying that they don't, nobody cares about the cover letter, it's just your film and they don't even read it, so don't even waste your time. So I don't have a clear answer on this. Personally, I have a cover letter that I, it's kind of a template and I tailor it each time when I'm submitting, but I do make sure it's good and professional. I don't know for sure if they actually read them, but it definitely doesn't hurt. Building an online presence, um, creating a website, social media pages dedicated to your film, providing information about the cast, making IMDb, just using online platforms to share trailers, behind the scenes content, updates about your film. I'll be the first to admit that I definitely lack in this department and I need to be better at this, but I know it definitely does help to get the word out there if you're conscious about always promoting it on social media or whatnot, or making people aware that it exists. Submitting to specialty festivals. So there's a lot of film festivals out there that apply to a niche. If your short film is a horror film, it is probably a good idea to check out some of the, the horror festivals out there, or likewise in the comedy. There's all sorts of festivals that apply to like a niche. And, and if your film is applicable to one of those niches, it's it'll help your chances to get in. And also expose it to an audience who's enthusiastic about that. I mean, what would be better than if you had a horror short film to get it into a really good horror fe film festival and, you know, tons of people who love the genre of horror can check out your film. These are a couple of things that I would have done better moving forward. I do a better job of making my film into a package, like I said before, having a good poster, trailer, stills, and promotional material. I kind of lacked on some of those things. For example, I don't think my poster was the best. I love movie posters, and I think a, a poster that really captures the essence of your film and draws people in is is so powerful, almost as powerful as like a really good trailer. So yeah, I would have maybe invested more resources in that and spent more time on um, getting a really good poster made. Also, I didn't even make a trailer for this one. I probably would spend more time making a trailer, just more things that would, um, are good at like promoting your film and drawing people in. Having more of a presence online, making a website, uh, utilizing social media more to promote. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would try to be uh, more shameless about it in a way. I know people who are really like, they're always promoting their film and I'm not necessarily one of those people because I, I feel self-conscious about it sometimes, but like there are people who are always plugging their work and I think that definitely helps a lot, you know. Um, potentially bringing someone on board who has more festival experience than me would be a, a very helpful thing down the road. Uh, a good producer who knows the ins and outs of festivals, like has connections, they know what type of marketing material you, is best and what you need to have and who needs to get it. And yeah, just somebody to help you um, navigate that process and who's better equipped to deal with uh, the ins and outs of 
festivals. I would also get a more organized in the beginning on uh, what films I wanted to submit to. I'd make like a spreadsheet and um, keep detailed information of each one, when deadlines are, how much it is, where it is, uh, potential travel costs, all that stuff. And I, I would also make a budget and like allocate like how much money I want to spend on festival submissions. Yeah, just be more organized about it. Yeah, before on this one, I was just a lot less organized about it. I just kind of submitted to festivals as deadlines approached and I would find a festival and I would say, oh, this looks cool or I'm not really into this one. And there wasn't really any strategy to it. So I would definitely like have a lineup of like the my top list, my wish list. And then I would have like maybe, you know, a second a uh, block of films that were like my backups and yeah, it would just be a lot more uh, methodical about it and more prepared. So in wrapping this up, do I think film festivals are worth it? Well, in my opinion, the answer is complicated and really depends on what you're hoping to get out of it. There's no really direct one answer. From a monetary standpoint, I'd say no. Personally, I've lost money and have not gotten any closer to getting distribution from my film or making a penny back on it. But since my film was a short, I wasn't expecting a distribution deal of any sort anyway, because in reality, the market for shorts is pretty brutal. I'm sure there's some clickbaity YouTube video out there of some filmmaker claiming they made like a million dollars off their short film. And if you have, then all the more power to you but in my experience with just about every person i've spoken to who's had shorts and festivals it's extremely unlikely that you'll make profit back on your short film through conventional distribution even filmmakers i've met who have gotten into some top tier festivals and won awards have told me that they still haven't made money back on their short film now this may have led to them getting hired for something else or leveraging that film into funding for a different project. But in terms of submitting your short to a festival and some distributor seeing it and deciding to take it up and distribute it and turning a profit off of it, I've never personally met someone who's done that. Although there's always exceptions, but in my guess, they're part of the minority. Regardless of the out-of-pocket expenses, I will say that the overall experience of getting to screen my short in front of a live audience was worth it. And I find there's nothing more beneficial to your development as a filmmaker than screening your work in front of a live audience and seeing how people react to the film. And festivals are a perfect platform for this. Although I can't say that attending festivals has helped my career skyrocket in the short term, I do think this process has made me a better filmmaker. And I've met some amazing people through attending film festivals that I could potentially see myself collaborating with sometime down the road. Just getting to meet and learn from others in the filmmaking community has been tremendously inspiring and overall a positive experience. In short, my thoughts are that film festivals are the experience you choose to make it. And depending on your expectations, this is really up to you as an individual. I feel like there's this myth in the filmmaking world that there's a single moment where your career takes off. For example, you put, all, you put all you have, your blood, sweat, and tears into making this one outstanding film. And by miracle, everything comes together just right and you beat all the odds and you get selected into Sundance. And this film sweeps all the awards and then afterwards someone like Steven Soderbergh walks up to you and tells you how brilliant you are and wants to produce your next film. And finally, you think, I've reached the top of the mountain and the film gods have opened the floodgates and your career blasts off. And although maybe something like this has happened to someone at some point in film history, if you go into festivals with this mind state, I think you're going to be very disappointed. Just watch Mark Duplass's famous The Cavalry Isn't Coming speech, which he gave at South by Southwest, which I think anybody who truly wants to make a living as a filmmaker should listen to at least once to put things into perspective. In reality, I see festivals as part of the process to get your work seen and hone your craft, hopefully taking you one step further to your goal of becoming a better filmmaker. It's not realistic to think that getting into one festival, even if it's a really, really good one, is going to change your life forever overnight. But hey, if you're the exception, then you've hit the jackpot. But in the words of two other master filmmakers, that is no such thing, I feel, the overnight success. When young artists or whoever you are think that the hand of God, you're, you're 
told all these stories and myths and stuff like that, the hand of God has come out of the blue heavens and anoint you as the next motherfucker? Mm-mm. No, no, no. There's no shortcuts. No. That's what I'm saying. No, there's no shortcuts. No shortcuts. No. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah.